Rick, it has been a crazy time. Obviously, everyone woke up to the news of the stock market crashing, what that means for the economy. And of course, the first thought has got to be after the sort of Harris honeymoon, as I keep saying it, this is not what the Harris campaign want to wake up you know, to see, because obviously, if you're looking for who can fix the economy, it's pretty clear. Yeah, look, I think the world market, the world investors, the world knows that Kamala Harris is a very far left progressive. They see what her policies are, right? She has said that uh, she thinks red meat is bad for the environment. And so we should look to ban red meat in America. She has said that more cops on the streets are not necessarily a good thing for crime, uh, for crime prevention. And she's attacked the idea that illegal immigrants are not really illegal and that we shouldn't uh, be punishing people for coming across the border. Those are policies that are disastrous for America. And remember, uh, uh, you know, I'm looking at the German stock market, which is not doing well. And the Germans know firsthand that when you don't enforce immigration laws, you create chaos. And that's why we have a smaller European Union. Brexit happened. The British said, we're out of here because the EU couldn't control the immigration issue. We have to learn from some of these countries that have tried some of these uh, policies and have failed. People are nervous about this far left uh, Kamala Harris, Joe Biden uh, policies. And, And I'll finish with this, Logan, is that they see a war that has gone on in in Ukraine for years, that has gone on in uh, Israel and Gaza for more than 300 days, and it's getting worse. And so they see this weakness as bad for the economy. And when the polls started saying Kamala was up and Kamala could be president, the world markets have reacted. Rick, you look at what's happening, you see this. Uh, a lot of times, once it, it starts to be uh, front page news with the stock market crashing, it, it's indicative of what the American people have been struggling with for much longer. But yet the Biden team and the Harris campaign now have been telling us over and over again that this is the best economy in the world and that the uh, there's never been anything better. The prices are coming down, even though we knew they had record inflation and that the uh, stock market's doing great under Joe Biden and the housing crisis isn't a crisis. They're gaslighting the American people about this, but yet at the same time, as we know, Americans have felt real pain at home. You bring up the funding of things like Ukraine, where it's over and over again, uh, we are just writing astronomical checks to Ukraine and Zelensky with no oversight. We know the rampant corruption there. Do you think that this right now, this could be a pivotal moment in America where as the economy is, is not doing great here and it's everywhere, that we still continue to push these huge paychecks to Zelensky and his crew in Ukraine. Yeah, I would add one more thing. Over the last couple of days, we've seen that the State Department announced that they gave $239 million to the Taliban. That's $239 million of hardworking Americans' money to the Taliban. I look at this and I think, you took money from my mom, who's on Social Security, to give to the Taliban, this is so incompetent, corrupt, and outrageous that I I think there's a clap back. I think there's a pendulum swing back against the, the media and the propaganda that they put out. Remember, this is the same crew that told us Joe Biden was fine and that we were looking at cheap fakes if you thought that Joe Biden couldn't walk up the stairs or had to be escorted off the stage by Barack Obama. This is literally the same team that told us Joe Biden is fine, and now they're telling us the economy is fine. The world is saying, you're wrong. We can't deal with this propaganda. And there is a pendulum swinging back from regular people around the world. And Rick, uh, all of this can't be uh, looked at without also talking about the looming threat from Iran to retaliate against Israel. You see Anthony Blinken telling the G7 that it could come within 24 hours. That was yesterday, Axios reported. Um, We know that Iran has said they're going to retaliate for the killing of the Hamas leader on 
their soil. But uh, what, what's kind of your outlook on how the U.S. will respond? Does it create a global crisis, uh, maybe even a bigger war there in the Middle East, all at this time where our economy is, I mean, down 2% in the Dow just this morning? Look, uh, peace is good for America. It's good for people. Uh, and it's very good for the economy. And this is what Donald Trump brought us. Donald Trump uh, consistently worked to to bring more Arab-Israeli peace agreements, no wars in Europe. It's very difficult to avoid war. I, I, I'm going to be honest. It's a lot easier just to let the conflicts slide into military action. And that's what we've seen from this administration, multiple wars. I don't understand the American people who say that they're voting for Kamala Harris. She is so far progressive left. She's more of this DEI programming. And I, I, I honestly, the American people have got to wake up. They cannot keep complaining about wars and killings and an open border and inflation and, and vote for the people that are giving it to them. It, it, to me, it's, it, it, what's happening today is just proof of what we've always known is that these weak policies from Biden and Harris are going to make our country less safe and less prosperous. This is what President Biden said just a few days ago outside the White House. They said, Mr. President, a reporter asked, what do you want your legacy for Gen Z to be? Obviously, the Gen Z voting bloc. He goes, that I cured the economy. And here we are this morning. So you tell me how you, that makes you feel. How does it feel to be just lied straight to your face from the Biden administration, from Joe Biden himself, from Kamala Harris? They're just lying to you and hoping you take it. You're watching clips. I was at an event yesterday and heard people discussing who they wanted to be the vice presidential pick. And you got to remember, this is not a joke when I say this. Uh, they were discussing the different social media content being created for each of the potential vice presidential candidates for the Democrats. And that's how they were deciding. That's pretty wild. That should be eye-opening to you. Get on the ball here, everybody. Again, the ACLJ, we've extended our Life and Liberty Drive through the month of August because we need it, folks. I would tell you, it is the economy is down. Of course, that's hurting everybody right now. But we are dealing with some unordinary times and some unordinary cases. They are historic. And thanks to your support, we're going to be able to continue these fights for your God-given rights and constitutional freedoms. We are fighting literally to save lives. Be a part of it. Go to aclj.org. Become a ACLJ one-time supporter or an ACLJ champion. That's a monthly recurring donor. If you are brand new to this broadcast, what I ask you to do if you're watching on YouTube or Rumble or Facebook or X is follow, subscribe, whatever that is. Do it right now. I'd love to see that number spike.